One thing that's always interested me about video games are the glitches that are found within them, which usually are unintentional features that can either positively or negatively affect your experience. Although most of these take skill and patience to pull off, sometimes they occur naturally without any effort, which are the ones I specifically want to show off in today's video, where here, I want to look at a few from every entry across the entire Mario series. I guarantee that there are a few unique ones here that you have never seen before, that are easy enough to try out for yourself at home. And, oh yeah, before I get started, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet, then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. The very first game to be released in the mainline series is Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System, where there's one interesting bug in that that I want to discuss, in one that makes a few particular Hammer Bros. tough to kill. This takes place in World 8-3, where these specific hammer-throwing foes sometimes can't be killed if you throw a Koopa shell at them, which I believe is just some sort of strange oversight by developers. This is insanely annoying, especially because hammer bros are difficult to face off against, so this added pressure doesn't help you on your playthrough. These were at least fixed in newer versions, so it definitely was not something that was initially intended. The second entry of the original NES trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 2 that came out in Western markets in 1988, having a few bugs I want to look at that forced some insane things to happen, starting with causing the logs to float upwards instead of their usual falling down waterfalls. This is extremely easy to do as you just have to bring a POW block to an area where these logs show up, then stand on top of one of the logs and throw it, where you'll see that things glitch up and they begin to rise to the top of the screen. Even though this is pretty game-breaking, there isn't much to do in this strange state. Although, it definitely is a hilarious sight. Another bug I want to talk about is one that allows you to cause a spark enemy to float in mid-air. This one has actually happened to me accidentally before during my playthroughs, where all you have to do is remove the block at the exact right moment so that the spark has nowhere else to go, making it literally look like it's floating in mid-air. Finally, I just want to mention one flaw in a level design, where if you pick the wrong path, you can actually be stuck forever. This can be done in World 2 too, where all you have to do is dig out the entire left side of the bottom of the pyramid sand section, and you'll quickly see that you have no way of traveling back up and onto the other side to complete the stage. Of course, this does take some work to pull off, so it's not like it'll accidentally happen every time. But what makes things worse is that this game has no timer, so you pretty much just have to restart as you'll be stuck there forever if you don't. The final of the original trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 3 that was released in North America in 1990, containing two weird bugs I want to look at, starting with one that can turn Mario both invisible and invincible. This can only happen in World 3-9, where you need to break these bricks leading to the pipe, then duck on the white platform to get behind the stage. Where in that weird area, you want to go down the pipe that you just uncovered. When you get out the other side, for some reason your character model will be invisible, as well as making you invulnerable to any foes you come across. Noticing when you pass an enemy, that the faintest silhouette of Mario can be seen. This is actually pretty cool to mess around with, although I doubt this was on purpose, as usually when you go behind the screen, you can still take damage. The other glitch I want to showcase is the one where certain coins for some reason act as bricks in World 2-3. Here done with the help of a switch block. After triggering it, you then need to go to the end of the area that has the two Koopa Troopas, where you'll see that every block has now turned into coins, even though a few of them may not be collected. Not really sure why this is a thing, but it's a cool visual glitch that can happen without you trying too hard. Up next, I want to look at the exclusive Japanese sequel to the original that was released years later in Western markets under the name of The Lost Levels having two strange bugs revolving around Hammer Bros that I want to talk about, starting with one that causes them to go flying up in the air. This can happen the easiest in World A1, where you need to draw the bro to the pipe by standing on top of it and wait for a bit. This will cause the foe to jump on top of the pipe and get hit by the piranha plant, which will cause it to go flying in the air. Just a fun thing to see that doesn't really change too much. The other bug I want to mention can happen in literally any stage the Hammer Bros show up, as standing in a specific spot will ensure that you don't take any damage from them. This happens if you're right at the edge of the screen, where for some reason their hammers can't interact with you, giving you a bit of a breather until you figure out your next move. 
The very first handheld game to come out in the franchise is Super Mario Land for the Game Boy. Having two very buggy moments within levels that I want to talk about, starting with the odd way that you can enter a pipe in World 2-1. This is all within that stage's sub area, where here you have to break the two bricks just below its exit pipe, then jump towards the left entrance of it from below. If you did it correctly, then you'll see that Mario actually somehow enters it from beneath? putting him through this weird-looking animation that is unnatural in every way, shape, or form. The other is a very interesting way that allows you to get out of bounds in World 1-3, done by using your platforming skills as you need to jump up and around a few of the exposed bricks. Once you're on top, you need to run to the very end of the stage where you can actually complete the level as long as you're over top the exit, which I'm pretty sure wasn't an intentional thing, but intriguing that you can still finish the level in this way. Next up is the Super Mario World Super Nintendo Entertainment System Entry, where there's one bug I want to look at that you can easily pull off yourself, which is the one that actually glitches the end cutscene after you defeat Bowser. All you have to do here is hold up just as you kill the King Koopa, where you'll see Mario begins to trip out as he switches between running and looking up to the sky. I'm sort of surprised this doesn't crash the game as this is a cutscene and you're doing something you're not supposed to, and there are other times in other entries where if you do this, things really go haywire. The second handheld entry in the series is also the sequel to Super Mario Land, coming out for the Game Boy here in 1992, where I want to show you a glitch that makes your game lag like crazy, done with the aid of an enemy that throws a projectile. As soon as that type of foe throws their weapon at you, just go off the screen a bit so it can't contact you waiting here for about a minute. After that time, if you move forward, then you'll see that the game will become unbearably laggy, all due to the fact that that enemy has been throwing projectiles at you the entire time from off screen, overloading the game and causing this insane glitch. The first game to feature a mustachioed hero in the 3D realm is Super Mario 64 for the N64, where I just want to look at one bug that glitches out the wing cap, being done most easiest within Bob Bomb Battlefield. Once you have the red exclamation mark boxes activated, you just need to hit this one near the bridge and stand still until the block spawns again. Quickly hit that block and capture that already activated red cap before it disappears. Then collect the new one, and for some reason Mario will be seen holding the cap instead of wearing it on his head. In this buggy state you can still fly and do everything else normally. It's literally just purely visual, and not something you'd expect at all. The next game to be released, also based within the 3D realm, is Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube, which has a few bugs I want you to see, starting out with the glitched out trees. These are specifically the growable ones found within Bianco Hills, where in spraying water from the flood at them, just as they're out of your view, causes them to grow weird, as they aren't their normal size and instead look like a little sproutling. Now this is definitely an oversight, as you can still climb on these trees, even at times climbing in thin air where they're supposed to be, but they're not. And this probably has something to do with you not actually being able to see them grow, but I'm not really sure. The other one I want to mention is the fact that your flood does not show up properly in reflections, as the nozzle component of it is completely missing. This could be seen best in the parabolic mirrors of Gelato Beach, the hotel lobby mirrors of Serena Beach, and in the lake waters of Bianco Hills. And if I'd have to guess, this most likely has something to do with the fact this part of the device is interchangeable. So it must have been hard to animate all three of the reflections, but who knows. Nintendo would eventually return the series to its 2D platforming roots with the release of new Super Mario Bros. for the dual screen system, where all three of the bugs I want to look at revolve around the Mega Mushroom, starting with the method in which you can use to store it. Now I've talked about this at length in other videos, but it does tie into the other two glitches I want to look at, so bear with me. Now this is done by hitting the block it's contained within in World 1-1, then jumping Mario at this question mark block, collecting it at the exact same frame his head hits it. This will trick the game into thinking that you can't power up into Mega Form under the solid object, letting you then use it really wherever you please. I get that you can also just get one from the orange toad houses, so whichever method you prefer in collecting it, it doesn't really matter. You just need to have one stored for the next two glitches to work. So the first of these is one that actually allows you to transform into your gargantuan size during a cutscene, specifically the one that plays immediately after you beat Bowser. To do this, you just have to collect the Mega Mushroom on the literal same frame that you activate the switch, 
where if you do it properly, you can see that Mario turns comically gigantic. The other is one that turns you into Mega Mushroom form, but a fraction of the size you're supposed to be, needing a spring or mushroom trampoline for this to work. All you need to do is collect the power-up as soon as you begin to bounce on one of those objects, and for some reason this will stop you from growing to your large size. Although, the hitboxes are the same, so it's really just something visual that trips out. Next to be released is the Space Space Super Mario Galaxy Wii title that has one bug within it that I want to focus on, which is one that for some reason allows you to fall twice. This is actually pretty easy to pull off, and happens if you long jump towards the giant ring in the center of the overworld hub, where falling into the void in this area usually puts you into a bubble. Now, for some reason here, you're actually bubbled twice, as the game must not recognize that you're on the right platform and tries to re-correct things so you're not glitched out. Now, I'm sure this must have happened by accident to someone who is just fooling around in the game, which goes to show that no matter how much testing is done, there's always going to be things that slip through the cracks. The second installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out for the Wii in 2009, where I want to show off a glitch from it that actually allows you to technically kill a Chain Chomp twice. This can only happen in World 7-2. Where you, need to equip yourself, where you need to equip yourself with a superstar before you enter the level, then make your way to the first chain chomp, and ground pound the stake that's attached to it until it's one hit. Next, you have to complete the final ground pound, just as the chomp passes by so that you kill it both with your superstar, and via releasing it from the chains. Here you'll see it die, then spring back to life as soon as it's released, which is odd at first glance, but looks even stranger when you slow things down. Next is the sequel to the Wii Space Space entry, here also coming out for the system, but in 2010. Having one amazing glitch that happened to me before that I have to show off, which can make Yoshi's tongue become unfathomably long. To have this occur, you have to hatch the Yoshi that spawns on the Starship Mario, and take him to this warp pad in the starting area. Next, get really close to it, have your Wiimote cursor over the Luma or Toad so that you can lick it, then press B as soon as you step into the warp. If you did it right, then you'll see that your Dino Buddy's tongue will extend to extreme lengths, being attached to that thing that you just licked way in the distance. This is the most craziest if you go on the Star Shroom, as it goes across the entire gap all the way back to Starship Mario, which I can't lie, just looks awesome. Nintendo would eventually blend aspects of the series 2D and 3D realms with the release of Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS. Having two specific bugs I've found that I want to look at, starting with one where you can get the Prongo stuck on top of a wallop. This can really only be done in World 6-4, as these two foes show up very close to one another, needing to draw the Prongo to the wallop, then pass the wallop as soon as the Prongo is about to attack. If everything aligns perfectly, then the Prongo will actually land on top of the wallop and get stuck on its head, although it can recover and go back to normal, so this doesn't last that long. The other is a bug that allows you to actually sink into the lava without taking any damage during the second Bowser Castle of World 8, using the Bone Coaster as your aid. To do this, you just need to stand on the moving platform's tail just after the first initial drop, where for some reason you'll get bonked off of the Bone Coaster and land sort of within the lava at the top of the slope. Here you can just move back and forth, but not forward, or else you will die. So you can't do much here other than enjoy the weirdness. The third installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries is oddly given the moniker of the second, and came out for the 3DS in 2012. Having really only one glitch I care to discuss, which is the fact that one specific Goomba is a bit bugged out. This only shows up in Course 1 of the DLC Gold Rush Pack, where you need to bypass the first gold ring while you're falling down, then progress through the stage until you reach the second one with a Goomba stack. Once you get to the Goombas, backtrack to trigger the ring, and you'll see that this one specific one for some reason is flat, which doesn't make much sense as you haven't interacted with it to this point, but oh well. The last and final installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came up for the Wii U in 2012, where there's one bug I want to look at that causes Baby Yoshi to float in midair. This happens in the swaying ghost house of World 4, where you need to bring the blue Baby Yoshi to this area within the void and throw him down it while the auto-scrolling travels upwards. This glitches out Yoshi so he's just stuck at the bottom of the screen motionless, just looking absolutely dumbfounded, not being able to be interacted with at all. 
Next up is the Wii U Super Mario 3D World entry, where there's one really insane bug that allows you to swim in an invisible pool of water right away in the first level, Super Bell Hill. All you need to do is long jump off the stage right at this specific part of the level, which will cause you to land in water that for some reason isn't there, but it also is. I'm guessing that the developers once had a pool of water here, and it was removed in the final product, but for some reason the physics remain, allowing you to swim around here in a spot where you usually just fall into the void. This would be removed in the re-release on the Nintendo Switch, so they were clearly embarrassed enough about it to have to fix it. Next to be released is the absolutely massive Super Mario Odyssey Nintendo Switch entry, where I've already talked extensively about glitches from this title, so I want to look at something I didn't even know about, which is that you can actually grab an invisible pole underneath a ledge on the dark side of the moon. This is the one that's near the entrance of the brutal boss fight area, where it actually extends downwards way further than it was supposed to, where you're able to grab it and make it look like Mario is just sort of floating in midair. At the right angle, you can also pull yourself upwards through the platform, making you travel through it. Something I'm assuming was an accident by developers, as they probably wouldn't even have thought anyone would explore this area. Now I do have to give a note, this is 2024, and people will spend all day looking for things like this. Although really, it's not that big of a deal, and doesn't really break anything in the game. Up next is the Bowser's Fury game mode, that was released alongside the re-release of Super Mario 3D World for the Switch. Having one glitch that really doesn't take much effort to pull off, in Spring Teleporting done in the Cap Swipe Coliseum area. Here you need to be powered up with a Super Bell so that you're in Cap Mario form, and climb the side of the wall just below where the spring is. You know you did it right as you'll get slingshotted upwards and land on the spring, passing directly through solid ground on your way to the top. I guess this could allow you to skip a small portion of the area, but it really isn't that helpful of a glitch. Just a weird thing that I'm sure stunned a lot of people. Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. I didn't include Super Mario Bros. Wonder on this list, as it's too new, and most of the glitches that have been found are already patched. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, comment below what you thought about it, and of course subscribe to my channel. Also, please follow my Instagram at copycatgamer, there I'll put some cool clips, and Ives Fry collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!